Sanskrit amongst the people in this part of the world. He served in Manchester and then he came in London for nearly two decades. He headed the Sanskrit department here at the Bhavan and worked tirelessly not only to help the Bhavan but to popularize our great heritage through the medium of Sanskrit by teaching Sanskrit, conducting classes, giving lectures, etc. He passed away three years ago. Unfortunately, he has been taken away from us. But with the support of all his friends and his family, we decided that every year we must have something in memory of our Shastriji. Last year and before last year, we had that. Sadhanand Das, who came and conducted conversational Sanskrit courses. And this year, we are so very lucky to have Shatavadhani, Dr. Ganesh Ji, here to speak on today on Nakya Shastra. Before that, I would like to say a few words about Sri Ganesh Ji. A wonder in the world of scholarship. Someone who is an expert in all aspects of Indian art and culture. A brilliant Sanskrit, Telugu, Tamil and Kannada scholar. A graduate in the field of engineering. Someone who knows so many different languages and who received his PhD on the subject of Avadhana Kala. Avadhana Kala is an art of literary performance which involves an improvisation of poems using specific theme, meters, forms, words, or even letters. Details of Avadhana Kala and what it is. All that will be known to you. Please make a note of the date coming Tuesday. He will be speaking on Avadhana Kala. Our Dr. Ganesh Ji is someone who has an in-depth knowledge about our literature, art, music, and also culture. And he has written several books on these topics, has conducted, has taken part in hundreds and thousands of Avadhana Kala events in Bangalore conducted. He 
is someone who is capable of composing and has composed several poems. And on the spot composition, is an expert in that. Someone who has studied Indian music, Indian dance, and in-depth knowledge of these subjects he has. Someone who could speak with authority on these and many other subjects. <coughs> has written several books, as I mentioned to you, and has received so many awards, I'll just enlist a few. Karnataka Rajyotsava Award, Rashtriya Yuva Puraskar, Pratibha Puraskar Award, Badarayana Vyasa Puraskar Award, Siddhiya Prashasti, and Honorary Doctor of Literature from Tumkur University. Friends, <coughs> we have amidst us an authority on Natya Shastra, especially for today's talk. <coughs> We will be speaking on Natya Shastra for approximately one hour, and then you are most welcome to ask questions. I hope all the students who have been learning dance, the teachers who have an interest in Indian art and culture are here amongst us. I would request you to uh, uh, write your uh, questions, keep it ready, and afterwards we will bring the microphone towards you Afterwards, our Chatavadani Ganeshi will be responding to those. Now, over to Chatavadani Dr. Sri Ganesh. Namaste. Oh, Jayate Kapada Kramta Samasta Bhuvanatraya Dvitiya Pada Vinyasa Vyakula Vinaya Shiva Jayanti Stai Sanchari Bhava Pinaya Pavuka Nila Lohita Shailusha Brulata Lasya Vipramaha Good evening. I am very much beholden to Bharati Vidya Bhavan London and especially Dr. Nandukumar Ji, my long standing friend. And the whole family of him I know. And even it's a heartening occasion. And of course, it is a, a rather a painful experience also that uh, we don't have uh, Professor Satyanarayana Shastri with us. However, I am here to deliver three days' talk in memory of him. I knew him well. And all these associations, they bring a lot of uh, aroma into the field of learning and also the topic with which uh, am involved. I am very much happy and at the same time I feel diffident also to talk to you people here at this distance from India from where I have come, from where I have come. And also a topic like Nati Shastra, which is too well known a topic. What do you think can you expect from me? Kutova Nutanam Vastuvaya Mutrikshita Mukshamaha Vastu Vinyasa Vichitya Matra Matra Vicharyatam or Vacho Vinyasa Vichitya Matra Matra Vicharyatam. What is new stuff we can bring out apart from new format? Here also I am a little bit worried. Please bear with my English, my pronunciation or even the syntax and whatever. I am going to talk to you regarding a work which was produced before at least 2000 years in Sanskrit. And it had a great tradition behind it. And that itself became a potent head of so many discussions for centuries and centuries. On um, these topics, to give a brief introduction or to, within a span of 45 or 30 or 60 minutes, it is a Herculean task. However, I am so confident about the theme, though my diffidence and my inabilities are manifolded, I think the topic itself will be engaging. I have a few things to present in front of you, you for your kind consideration. First about the newness, freshness of Natya Shastra, the unique feature and the universality of Natya Shastra, and then some technical details regarding that. Because we have both the core theory, the principal theory, and also the practice. 
All these have to be involved, tattva, the theory, and practice, prayoga. Now coming to sage Bharata, the very name is thought-provoking, and in Sanskrit that has many connotations, one such is to bear, vibhati iti bharataha, means to sustain. What else apart from a total theatre, the concept of total theatre can sustain art? It's only that. In that sense, it is the sustenance power of Bharata that produced Indian art and that contemplated on Indian art and that codified Indian art in manifolded ways. In that way, Bharata became a symbol of all that is sustainable and all that is meant for posterity after presentation. This is one connotation of Bharata. And at the same time, the very name of our country, Bharata, is after Bharata. There are many Bharatas, of course. One such Bharata is the sage of the treatise Nati Shastra. The other Bharata is son of Shakuntala and Dushyanta, as we know. Even in the Vedas, we speak of him. And Kalidasa has immortalized that name in his Shakuntalam. And the Shakuntaliya Bharata, or Daushyanti Bharata, is one. He ruled India, he unified India, and he brought all the provinces under one umbrella. And he performed so many Ashwamedhas and so many Rajasuyas. All are explained in detail in uh, Vedic treatises like uh, Aitareya Brahmana, Taitariya Brahmana and others. This is one way of political integration. And the other Bharata is of course brother of Rama. That Bharata, embodiment of obedience, embodiment of selfless work. That is one dimension. And we have the other Bharata, that is sage Bharata of Nati Shastra. There are many other Bharatas as well. One among the Chakravartins of Jain mythology is Bharata. And we have several other Bharatas in the field of dance and music itself. Vrata Bharata, Adi Bharata, Nandi Bharata, like that. But I'm not going to confuse you with all that <laughs> mind-boggling detail. But restricting myself to Bharata, the sage, integration from the perspective of art. Bharata not only assimilated all that was uh, prevalent in his time, in various provinces, in perspective of space, she also integrated those in the span of time. In that way, he integrated the temporal and spatial concepts of art and made them eternal. And that's why in the Nati Shastra we have Atra Shlokaha, Atra Shloku, Atra Arye, Atra Anumamshiye Arye, like that. Bharata himself mentions his indebtedness to so many people who came before him. So, we should not think that Bharata is a, an explosion by itself. Bharata had a holy tradition even before him. At the same time, we should not undermine his virtue, undermine his quality as we don't have any other clear works which were composed. Though Panini speaks of uh, Krishashva, Shilali, such people who wrote uh, Natasutra and other works on Natashastra, we don't have any of them. Something like Kalidasa, all that was written before him went to oblivion and what all was written after him was mostly modeled on him. That's what Dr. V. Raghavan, a doyen in the field of Indian aesthetics and poetics, he mentions. And that's, that he says regarding Kalidasa, and it equally applies to the great sage Bharata and his work. I don't want to discuss about the time, the possibility of his location and other things, because the work is very important. We should not ponder over such mental acrobatics, because it will no way lead us. In the work of Nati Shastra, in the work of Bharata, we have uh, 36 chapters. Abhinav Gupta, the great commentator of Nati Shastra, who existed before 1000 years in Kashmir, he says, Shatsahasri Samhita, and it is Natya Veda. It is Natya Shastra and Natya Veda. He makes two distinctions. Veda is universal in nature. The import, the spirit of it is eternal. That's what Veda means, according to Abhinav Gupta and even the Indian tradition speaks so. And Shastra is something which is well codified. Shasanath, well codified. Shamsanath, 
well revealed it should contain something which has to be presented in an order which has to be set in a beautiful perspective and at the same time you should bring out something new something beautiful something lasting that aspect is shamsana and the other aspect of codification and scientific methodology that is shasana both are very very important and the other aspect of natya shastra is it is product of all the vedas in the very first chapter he mentions bharata mentions the spoken word of natya the total theater has been drawn from the rigveda while the movement the articulation of the body avangika abhinaya has been taken from ajur veda and the vachika abhinaya's other dimension is music and that is from sama veda and then we have the rasa from atharva veda and so the combination of all the four vedas became natya veda and it is sarvavarniko veda again i don't want to go to the details of varna and the priorities and the repercussions and all that but what is very important in natya shastra is it is universal natya veda is sarvavarniko veda unlike the rigveda sama atharva vedas which were prescribed for the three varnas the dvijas well the natya veda is for the advijas as well in that sense art is universal and the universality of art has been beautifully suggested in this particular term natya veda but of course indian tradition never denied knowledge in universal sense jnane sarvesham adhikarah vidyayam sarvesham adhikarah like the shankara says in the three bhashya so vidya knowledge has right now everyone has right for knowledge knowledge is the right of one and all how it should come in what way it should come is a different thing but of course natya shastra is not like that even in the form and content of it it is universal and the other feature is after creating all the wisdom in the vedas there is no more new thing to explore there is no more new thing left to explore and that's why it has been reinterpreted and that's why i started my talk with one quotation kutova nutam vastu vayam uplikshit mukshamah vastu vinyasa ar vacho vinyasa vichitra matra matra vicharyatam a poem a verse from nayayika jayanta bhatta of kashmir he says we have nothing new to bring out it's only the form that can be novel in that sense art deals with the eternal things universal things which are always present everywhere present they are connected with our own emotions that deals with our emotions but how we deal with it and how we bring it out abhivyakti expression of it is very important experience is one and the same but expression always differs in that sense the form of natya differs but the content of it is the same age old thing and that's why a 10th century scholar on natya that is uh, uh, contemporary of bhojaraja senior contemporary of bhojaraja dhananjay and dashupaka says ramyam jugupsita mudara mathapi neecham ugram prasadi vikratam gahanancha vastu yatva yavastu kavi bhavaka bhavyamanam tannasti enna rasabhavam upaiti loke thus nothing under the sky which is not treated as a theme as a basic content for aesthetic production everything good or bad or ugly or whatsoever everything will become content everything will become theme for natya natya means total theater inclusive for in the present context it will be film bharata was not at all averse to modernity he again and again mentions whatever i have not dealt with here you please subscribe from your own experience and you go with it in that sense it is an open ended text also and that's why it is not shasana in the stringent sense it is anushasana it's a very compassionate instructor rather it's a something like a fellow traveler in the journey of the art and aesthetics coming back to the 36 chapters the first chapter is natyotpatti natya vedotpatti and the last chapter is natya avatara these two chapters are very metaphorical in nature both have two mythological stories 
here and there in the text in other chapters also we do get such stories but these two stories are very very important I mean if you may as well be knowing it but I am very fond of uh, repeating it because it has a lot of symbolism at the end of Krita Yuga at the beginning of Treta Yuga that is at the end of Golden Age and beginning of Copper Age perhaps all the people including the deities, demons and human beings, they all went to the creator of Indian mythology, Brahma, Chaturmukha Brahma, and they had single point agenda. We need an interactive, entertaining toy that should have audio-visual effect. So they never had any lofty agenda. They wanted something simple, they wanted something direct. They have to interact with it, they have to play with it, and we should have audio-visual effect. Because we know among the sense organs, those that of sight and that of sound, they are very important. Much of our art is depending on that. We don't have many other art forms which essentially cater to other things. They become, of course, very essential, but at the same time, there are more crafts. For example, cookery is an applied art. It's not a fine art in the sense music. Coming back to the chapter, they all go there and they pray for it. Pray for it, novel thing. Why they went? They started feeling pain and pleasure and they found some leisure time also. This is very important. And it can be interpreted in two ways, according to Indian mythology and in so many other mythological stories also we do get, there was golden age and we started deteriorating from that and that golden age and that life of happiness, brimful, brimming bliss was reduced, was depleted and gradually we fell on this planet and so we have lost charm, we have lost happiness, we have to get it back. To regain that we need art, something like that, one theory is there. So it is theory of farm. The other one is anthropological studies and the realistic pursuits they bring out. Earlier the caveman and the hunter had no time for entertainment, had never had any finer aspects of life. When he gradually started feeling, he or she started feeling it, then came art. Art is of course imitation, mimesis, anukaranam. Bharata speaks anukaranam and anukirtanam also. Exalted imitation, not mere imitation, it is exalted imitation. So in that sense, in the anthropological development also, we have art came late, first is reality, and then came ideality, the form of art. And that's how they wanted to have some entertainment. Earlier people had Apart from struggling for life, nothing left for them. There's no leisure time and not even entertainment. They didn't even dreamt of that. Of course, when they started developing, they did found some time for entertainment and they found lack of happiness and all that was taken care of by art. These are two interpretations possible in the text and you can take as you like it. Coming back to the story, they went and then Brahma created Hatya Veda. It means art and art appreciation is product of culture and civilization. And also in Krita Yuga, according to Indian mythology, according to stories, Puranic stories, Akrishta Pachya Bhumihi, there was no need to till, there was no need to plow the earth, no need to sow, no need to reap. Everything came as it is. It is very similar to the hunting person, hunting caveman who never had agriculture, one of the earliest forms of culture. And then he developed, we all know that story. But in Nati Shastra, that point of time has elapsed and they started feeling deficiency in that. They wanted to feel, they wanted to have something new, something more. Then came the Nati Veda. And he gives this particular Veda not even to gods, not even to human beings, let alone demons. He gives that to sages. It means art is a meditative medium and we need lot of uh, uh, blissful detachment 
for things around us. Then only we can pursue art. In that sense, it is Kala Yoga. And that's why later in the same chapter, the great uh, creator of Nartveda, Bharata, um, sorry, Brahma, he says, Nata Jnanam, Nata Chilpam, Nasa Vidya, Nasa Kala, Nasa Yoga, Nata Karma, Nartyas Minya, Nadushyati. He says, there's no yoga, there's no vidya, no kala, no jnana, no karma, no aspect of knowledge, no aspect of creativity that is not seen in Natya. It is amalgamation of everything. That's why rishis, seers have self-control. We have, according to Indian mythology, the gods, they are entirely rajas, bhoga. And daityas, demons, they are entirely tamas inaction, idleness. Human beings, common man, is always bothered by yoga kshema kātarya. Always bothered by his uh, two ends. How to meet the two ends? How to meet uh, the demands of uh, our living? These are the problems. Very few people think about life. And sages are such people, and those can only perpetuate the Veda, Nati Veda, and that's why they were given the responsibility and they were interested in this duty. Then, first presentation was produced. It was uh, beautiful. Samudra Vatana, Amrita Vatana, Chaving of the Milky Ocean. And then came the Ambrosia. All the story people who are uh, acquainted with Indian mythology know. But the text is not interested in that. But when the production was going on, the demons, they came onto the dayas and started attacking the artists who were participating there and they wanted to uh, stop the production. They disturbed that. Then Indra comes for the rescue and he protects everyone. But the demons go in the form of a delegation under the heading of Virupaksha and then they go to creator who created Nati Veda or Nati Shastra. We were insulted. We were humiliated. Our loss and our humiliation was glorified on the stage because in the uh, churn of the ocean, demons lost and uh, devas, deities won and they got the Ambrosia Amrita but the demons were denied of that. So it is an insult and this production should never be propagated, should never be popularized. Then the great god Brahma comes to the help of Bharata and says no. You should not feel bad. In art, many times such things happen. One group will be presented in bad light. At some other time, the other group will be given live light. This will all happen. But it is Manava Swabhava, it is Jagat Swabhava, it is the nature of the three universe that has been told here. Saptadvipanu Karanam Nati Veda. It is the imitation, mimesis of all the people, all the races, all the communities on earth that has been shown. And it will be presenting things as they are. We should not take it personally like that. He advocates the freedom of artist. We should not uh, insult the art medium and either the artist also. Then the demons somehow they are satisfied. In the last chapter, when Bharata teaches all these techniques of stage presentation and the aesthetics of uh, stage production, their students, his students, hundred in number. They are also called as sons of Bharata. And then they produce many plays. They start insulting good people. They start abusing good people. They start humiliating nice people, submissive people, with the virtue of their art. Then the gods, sages, they become angry. And they curse Bharata's children, Bharata's students. You be fallen people. And even the art, that you are propagating, that shall be cursed one. Then Bharata goes to the sages and guards, pleads for the art. Then the sages say, art will be saved from my, from, from our curse, but artists will always be cursed. It's a very, very telling story. It means art many times goes beyond persons, but artists are always human beings and they do have weaknesses. They do have angularities. Their reflectors cannot be trimmed. Seldom we get every good feature, every good virtue in one person. And 
and this goes true with the students of Bharata also. In that sense, the responsibility of artist is advocated, is suggested in the last chapter. In the first chapter, it is the freedom of art, liberty of artists, rights of the artist, and that the fact that we have duties of the artist. In both the sense, these two chapters are metaphorical in nature. In that way, how a Shastra, a scientific treatise, can become a metaphor in itself, how it can become a myth, a Purana, having so many layers of meaning, that is very interesting. And also, becoming uh, a code of conduct, a law, in the spiritual sense, all that is not Shastra. A Shastra like this, of the ancient period, has to be seen with a very, very compassionate and broad-based mind. If not, the losers are the people. If we start applying our theories of our times, if we start analyzing in our own biases, from the perspective of our own biases, what it turn out may or may not be good. But one thing is true, the text would suffer a lot. First, without any such bias, we should try to understand and appreciate the creator and the creation. Then we start analyzing them properly. For that, we should have a sound knowledge of the culture, the mindset which produced such a great treatise. Because even any conservative dating would clearly reveal that at least before 2000 years, this work was complete. Kalidasa was very clearly having the understanding of Nati Shastra, wrote his plays. Why? Even before him, Ashwagosha also wrote like that. Ashwagosha existed before 2000 years. Like that, in the internal evidence itself, we can easily understand the work belonged to at least 2000 or 2500 years. Posterity is there, work belonged to the golden age of Indian culture. At the same time, other feature of this work is it is very subjective. So many things have been told in different ways. If you start reading the book from the first chapter, second chapter of course is easily understandable because it deals with the, the stage, how the stages have to be built, different types of stages. Vikrishta, Chatrashtra, Treshta, like that, triangular, square and rectangular stages, how they can be accommodated, all these details can be easily understood. And in the third chapter, it deals with Rangadevata Puja, which are the deities which have to be consecrated on the stage, in which directions, and how all these rituals should go. It is part and parcel of ritual and religion. It can also be understood. But the fourth chapter, Tandava Lakshana Adhyaya, deals with actual movement. To understand the movement, we should know so many other details. It gives directly Karanas and then the combination of Karanas, Angaharas. For them, to understand them, we have to run, we have to jump to 8th chapter. In the 8th, 9th and 10th chapters, we have movement chapters. They are connected with the, the Angika. Unless we have knowledge of these chapters, we cannot understand the 4th one. And the fifth chapter is Purvangathaya. To understand that we have to get some knowledge of music. Those chapters are in the fag end of Nath Chastra. From 30th chapter onwards, we have a lot of details regarding music. In that way, it's a very peculiar text. So many chapters have been rather placed differently. Should we say assorted or confusing? Anything can be done. Anything can be said so. For that, we have to understand patiently from the first chapter, we have to jump to the seventh chapter and then to the sixth chapter and then to the other chapters like that. A different order itself is needed. Unfortunately, even today, such a critical edition of Nati Shastra is not prepared. That is a dire need of the day. So, compassionate reading needs all such equipments. Now, coming back to the basic content of Nati Shastra, in the sixth chapter itself, Bharata gives a beautiful equation, beautiful sutra, beautiful formula that is called Natya Lakshana Karika. Rasa, Bhava, Abhinayaha, 
धन्य वृत्ति प्रवृत्त सिद्धिस्वर तथा तोद्यम गान रंग संग्रह इन दिस वर्स ही मेन्शन लेवन ऐटम्स रस भाव अभिनय धर्मी वृत्ति प्रवृत्ति सिद्धि स्वर आतोद्य गान दीज आर दि फीचर्स विच आर् डिस्क्रेब इन नाटशास्त्र नाटशास्त्र इज नथिंग बट दि एक्सप्लेशन अफ आल दीज लेवन एलिमेंट्स ईच एलिमेंट इज एन इंडिपेडेंट सिस्टम बै इट्स elaborate analysis and detail are presented in natya strikes not to speak of its great commentary the only commentary available is of abhinav gupta and he gives lot of inputs and of course natya strike is written in a very lucid and simple language and yet without abhinav gupta we may really lose many things to give one example karna basic unit of dance has been defined by bharata as hastapada samayoga nattasya karanam bhavet na samayoga nattasya karanam bhavet by the combination of hands and feet the basic unit of dance karana is generated he gives 108 karanas but in these karanas three components are very very important of them two are connected with the dynamics of natya and one is connected with the statics of it statics is sthanaka is standing posture posture and chali is the movement below waist movement of the uh, body below the waist and rutas the movement of the body above the waist these two movements when they are clubbed with the static posture that is sthanaka it will become karana to bring an analogy of language something like uh, noun verb and adjectives and adverbs they are all needed for a sentence kartri karma and kriya as we call in sanskrit so kartri is sthanaka and then karma is chari and then kriya is nrathastha so that way all of these three put together they become a sentence like that karna is one basic form of sentence karna can communicate lot of meaning unlike the adagu of bharatanatyam or sadhi or the adagu of kuchipudi or even the tukdas of kathak all other deshi classical forms of modern india these karanas of natyashastra they are both uh, movements without reference and movements with reference referential and non referential movements both are present here referential means a specific meaning is being conveyed apart from beautiful articulation of the body non referential is of course beautiful movement is there and that itself is the end of it that is pure dance nritta and abhinaya is also present in karana because it is in the form of sentence to give one more analogy karanas are like shabda and artha alankaras embellishments of sound and sense but the adagus the tukdas and other forms they are like shabda alankara mere embellishments of sound and not of sense sense comes only when you take a theme the thematic representation is abhinaya abhinaya is a <coughs> larger in a larger context it deals so many other things but in the present parlance abhinaya is restricted to emotional and thematic expression in that way bharata gives karanas as hastapad samayoga but in this karanas at some places we don't have charis at some other places we don't have sthanaka at some other places we don't have rutastas sometimes two are missing sometimes one is missing sometimes all are present but abhinav gupta in his commentary compensates all that he gives beautiful explanation and supplements so many other features in that way it becomes very important and very useful to understand the text but one may say it is the version of abhinav gupta of course it is in one sense but we should not forget in the tradition of natya in the indian literary tradition shastra tradition commentaries are expansions innovations of the original text but without forgetting the spirit of it at many instances abhinav gupta says i have gone to the heart of bharata 
and understanding the pulse of him, I am composing this comment like that. One may say, it is his claim. Whatever may be, we don't have any other commentary apart from Abhinav Gupta, Sadhinav Bharati, and that's why I had to lay upon that. Like Shankar Bhashyam, which is the oldest available commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Sutra, and even the Upanishads, which, has very, which are very important and useful to understand the classical texts, like that Abhinav Gupta's also. Bharata's text is complete in its own right. But when see from the perspective of Abhinav Gupta, in the light of Abhinav Bharati, we get a lot more useful, a lot more insightful things. We should never forget. And that is the beauty of a living tradition. In a living tradition, every commentary will be extension of the text, will be meaningfully perpetuating the text. Only in a dead tradition, the text becomes perfect. In a living tradition, text will always be expanding, but not at the cost of its spirit. Of course, here and there we do have some deviations, some perversions, which may hamper the very cause of the text, hamper the very vision of the text, but they are easily dismissed and where they are very easily challenged. In that sense, Nati Shastra needs such commentary. Apart from the literary commentary, we do have sculptures, we do have uh, uh, actual tradition, living tradition of practice, practice itself in the form of musicians, theatrical people, dancers and many more. And we should never forget that Nati Shastra is not just meant for dancers. Many people restrict it as a, a treatise meant for dancers. It's a partial view. It is the basic text of Indian aesthetics as far as connected to poetry, prosody, to an extent grammar, vachika abhinaya, rhetorics, and then nritya, or dance, and then we have painting, sculpture, all are derivatives of movements. And in this sense, every sculpture should be, every sculptor should be having knowledge of Natya. Uh, when we look into a text like Vishnu Dhammotar Purana, we will be very easily understanding how dance is very important to understand and produce beautiful paintings and sculptures. In the conversation between Vajra and Markandeya, the sage, we get uh, this wisdom. Coming back to the topic, we have uh, works uh, on uh, music, elaborate works on music are present. For them also, Nati Shastra is the fountainhead. In that sense, it's a work on total theatre. Even film people also can get uh, useful material from Nati Shastra. Long ago, I had written an article, Bharata and Box Office. There, I had demonstrated how modern film people have so much to learn from Nati Shastra. And even they have uh, been honest and they have been faithful followers of Bharata without even reading because Bharata's work is reality. In the words of Shankara, it is Vastu Tantra. As it is a reality, people can realize them without even going to the text. The core philosophy can always be realized. Something like gravitation. Everyone can feel and understand gravitation. But the mathematical explanation, we have to go to Newton. But to have the feel of it, we do have it. Like that the feel of Nati Shastra is present in any successful film also. But coming back to the Nati Sangraha Karika, Rasa, the aesthetic experience, Bhava, the raw material for that. Bharasa, Bhava, Abhinaya. Abhinaya means the mode of communication. Communication can be manifolded. Major four aspects are Vachika, with the words, verbal communication, Angita, that is articulation of the body will be communicating. And then Sattvika, emotional communication, that is the communication. And then Aharya, communication through costume, maker, stage props, and all that. We can extend that usefully, meaningfully, so that in film, what all goes in the form of special effects, graphics, everything can come under the heading of Aharya Abhinaya. And the beauty is, Aharya, that can always be snatched away. If you have good costume, anyone can wear it. But emotional expression, no one can copy it, no one can snatch away that. In that sense, that is the Abhinaya, that is the best aspect of Abhinaya. 
Aharya is the lowest aspect. Lowest means it's not a look down, but it is the most peripheral. As we come closer and closer, Sattvika becomes very important. That is why the opening verse of uh, Nandikeshwara Sabine Darpada is a beautiful verse, uh, a beautiful meaning. That verse is very beautiful and most popular. Angikam Bhuvanam Yasya, Vachikam Sarvavangayam, Aharyam Chandrataradi, Tannumas Sattvikam Shivam. Some of the readings say, Tamvande Sattvikam Shivam. Angika is three words. All the universe is Angika. All the languages, all the literary expressions, all the expressions of sound are his vachika. And all the celestial bodies, the luminaries, they are all his aharya, alankara, embellishment. And he himself is sattva. Sattva is truth, reality. The nature of reality is sattva. Sadaha, bhavaha, sattvam. And anything connected with us, sattvasya idam sattvikam. Anything connected with the absolute reality is sattvika in that sense. We human beings, our existence is essentially <coughs> relying on our emotions. If we are not emotive people, we are not living. Practically, we are not living. So our very life is sattva. When that is presented, it becomes sattvika abhinaya. And all these four aspects of abhinaya, abhi towards naya, moving. Abhi also means dignified, nobler. Elegant, profound, all the meaning is that in that Vokasarga, the prefix Abhi, and Naya, Niyate, Abhitaha, Niyate, it is Abhinaya. Rasa, Bhava, Abhinaya. Dharmi. Dharmi means the mode of sustenance. Expression can be two folded. One is conventional, and another is realistic. Conventional means like uh, our rules as traffic rules as. In India, in England, while moving on the roads, left is right. But in America, right is right. Like that, we prescribe certain rules as accordingly we follow. In Nati Shastra, for Saluroki, for aside talks, we never had close ups like in our modern films. In the films, we can have close ups so that Saluroki can be shown, or even voiceover can be done. All such facility is there in film. But how to have such facility on a theatre, in the in theatre, on a stage? Now we have the lighting by having the focus light at one point and blurring the rest of the stage, we can show how his internal emotions and internal thoughts are depicted, like that. <coughs> New modes of uh, showing them. But during the time of Bharata, they were not present. That's why they did one thing like uh, Nati Dharmi. This is Tripataka Hasta. Use Tripataka. If I am showing this Tripataka, towards Nandakumarji, for that moment he is not listening to me. That is what it means. He may be listening with rapt attention, but for the people, onlookers, his, uh, these words are not going to him. Like that, as I talk, I am talking to them. Everyone is silent, everyone is a mute spectator and nobody is listening to me. That is how I have the Swagata, Saluloki. Like with the Tripataka, it's a convention. And there are so many such conventions in the gesture, gesture language. This Suchi Hasta, if once it is rotated like that, it means one year, hundred, something like that. It may go on. This can also mean Tripataka, by placing in different pay, different things. If I place like this, that may mean footwear. Bharata took the Paduka, the sandals of Rama, on his side and came from forest to Ayodhya. Placing it like that, Paduka on the head and cane. This is how suggestions can be extended. This Pataka Hasta has more than 40 Vinayoga applications to stop and to say what you want to say and to show the people and to show sky, all this and even to write and to say, no, I don't want to listen to you. So many things can be shown, but with this Sattva, everything should go with Sattva. I don't want to listen. I can't say. I can't show like that. While smiling and saying, no, I don't want to listen. No, I'm listening with rapt attention. That's how the expression suggests. So I don't want to listen. In that way, I have to show my expression. So any angika should be enriched with sattvika. In that way, the conventional movement 
will become successful only with the natural movement, natural expression that is Lokadharma. Lokadharma is imitation of the world as it is. But we cannot bring the world as it is on the stage. Even there we have discrimination. Even there we have some judicious adoption, adaptation. And that is called Lokadharma. Then we have Vritti. Vritti is the philosophy of a dance, philosophy of theatre. How it came into existence, it's a beautiful story, I don't want to go to the story. But uh, they were, uh, earlier there were four main clans in India. They had different warring techniques and they became dancing techniques. This is how Dr. V. Raghavan gives uh, the history of Vrittis in one of his papers, the same name Vrittis. Four clans belong to four parts of India, South, East, North, West. The Satvatas from the West produced Satvati Vritti. Bharatas from North produced Bharati Vritti. And Arvatas from the East produced Arvati Vritti. And Kratakishikas from South, they produced Kaishiki Vritti. That's how it is being narrated and studied by scholars. But uh, what the import is, from the war came dance. We all know, even the Second World War and First World War, so many innovations that happened in science and technology for the purpose of military came to civilians also. In any aspect of world, we have one research being adopted for the other field. Likewise, what was struggle for life, the hunting technique, became entertainment later. Morning, what was hunted in the night that was imitated and that became dance. That is what we say. And even the movements of Kanshastra, they reveal the reality. For example, we have something like Bhujangat Trasita and Bhujangat Trasta Vechita. These are some of the Karanas. The literal meaning is being scared of a serpent. Bhujanga, serpent, Trasita, being annoyed, being uh, scared by the movement of serpent. When the serpent just passes next to us, immediately we lift our foot. How we lift our foot, that movement is shown there. Uh, I would have shown it and you would have suffered it. <laughs> That's why we want to show. Uh, The initial aspect of Bhujangat Trasita and Bhujangat Trasta Vichita Dikam and even the posture of Nataraja, it is based on Bhujangat Trasita and Bhujangat Trasta Vichita. Vichita means extension, being annoyed by a serpent and then extending the foot. That is how it came to practice. In that way, looking at the animals, or Harina Pluta or Mridha Pluta, both Achari and Divani Karana, how a deer jumps and even Rishabhat Pridita, how a bull moves and Sarpita, how the serpents they call around and then Edaka Pridita, how a lamb jumps. All these movements are enshrined in Karanas. It means whatever they saw in the day and whatever they hunted, they started imitating. That's how it would have been developed. And even the hunting mechanism became the basis for warring mechanism also. And then it came to be known as art. And that's why we have martial arts. Earlier, fighting with a sword was life and death question. Now, fencing has become an art. It has entered into Olympics also. You all know. Much of our sports is nothing but the reminiscence of war. <laughs> The warring spirit is very essential in sports. That, in that way, sublimating the reality, it will become art. In that sense, Bharata says, Sarvasya Natyam Bhavanu Kirtanam. It is the exalted imitation of the three worlds. It is not mere imitation, it is not dry imitation. Dry imitation will easily wither, will easily go pale. But when it is exalted, there comes the imagination of the artist. Mere imitation is craft. 
But exalted evocation is art. In craft, we have the element of utility. To speak in the language of Bhagavad Gita, Phalakarpanya, Kirpanas Phalahetavaha, that's what Krishna says. People who are just uh, riveted to results, they are mean, they are lesser people, lesser mortals. But uh, who transcend the temptation of end results and who are enjoying the process itself, they become greater people and they are real conscious. It is not what happened next, it is how it is going to happen that's very important. It is not the end posture, it is the course of the posture, course of the movement that is very, very important. It is not from one note to other note you move. How you move is very important. So, the gap between the two notes, how effectively, in a sustained manner, how beautifully we bring it out and fill it, that becomes music. And that's why in between the tangible notes, we have intangible gamakas. Gamayanti raganiti gamaka. They, dy they dynamically infuse a lot of uh, beauty into that raga, into the notes. <coughs> and that's why they are called gamaka. And that cannot be taught. It has to be realized. Because no other, no instrument can show it because it is intangible. We can have the independent notes, sa, ri, ga, ma, all these are there. To give an example from Indian music, we have Todi Gandhara. In Todi Raga, South Indian music, in North Indian music, there is no counterpart for Todi. In North Indian music, what Todi Raga, that becomes Sindhu Bhairavi of uh, Karnataka music. And uh, that is called, uh, sorry, uh, Shubhapantra Varadi of Karnataka music. And Bhairavi of Hindustan music that becomes Sindhu Bhairavi of Karnataka music. Well, the Todi Gandhara of Karnataka music is very unique. Sariga. It is neither the nor uh, ma. In between that oscillation, that comes with the gamaka. This intangibility can only be experienced by people who transcend the anxiety of end result. Art is nothing but process. And process can neither be accelerated nor reduced. If you have to listen to music for an hour means, you have to listen to it for an hour. You cannot fast forward it. If you fast forward, the beauty itself will be lost. So also no acceleration and no deceleration is possible. In that way, this essence of art is well defined by Bharata and explained by Bharata in that particular phrase, Anukirtan. Mere imitation is Anukarana. Anukurute iti anukarana, anukirtana, kirta iti, paribhava iti, shlaga iti, nirupa iti, so many meanings are there with anukirtana. And that's why Indian art is uh, stylized. And that stylization owes much to anukirtana. Indian poetry is uh, uh, embellished. It's very ornate in nature. And that uh, ornamentation cannot be easily translated into other languages. I find so much of difficulty in translating one Sanskrit verse. But it's so easy to translate the same Sanskrit verse into Kannada or Telugu or Hindi or other Indian languages because they belong to the same cultural view. The cultural feel is there. For example, in uh, Indian dance, we have a lot of usage of hands, the fingers. Vyavartita, Parivartita, Vukveshtita, Apaveshtita, like that. So many ways of movement of the fingers are there. These are called Hastakranas. They have to flower out as they act. Uh, something like a flower, they have, to, they, have, they have to pull out and pull in. This will have, this is not seen in so many other dance forms, at least as far as my knowledge is concerned. Such embellishment and even uh, curvilinear movements. Tarangita uh, Gati, so much of movement in the fingers that can all be established and all that attributes to the uh, ornate nature, the, uh, the convoluted nature of Indian art. In all these things we have Ankirtana. It's not just one word for Surya. There are hundreds of words for Sun, hundreds of words for Lotus. And the same imagery can be told in so many other ways. Your face is something like the arc of moon. 
a simple thing, Chandra Mukhi, to communicate that Sanskrit poets have many techniques. By seeing your face, I remember moon. That is Marana Alankara. The figure of speech connected to memory. I am confused whether it is your face or moon. He is Bhranti Madalankara. I, I swear, I swear by Jav, it's not your face, it's moon that has fallen on earth. It is Atishayati, <laughs> hyperbole. Uh, and uh, one more thing. By looking, uh, uh, your face is like moon, and moon is like your face. It means Tulya Vogita. I don't want to compare your face with moon, but I want to say moon is like your face. <laughs> that is Pratipa, inversion, imagery of inversion. Means the same thing can be told in so many ways. At least from 30, 40 ways it can be told. Appai Dikshita in his and sorry, Chitra Mimamsa, he gives a lot of such examples. I am saying, to appreciate Indian music, Indian art, this convoluted nature and this complex nature of ex uh, expression is very important. Uh, uh, an agitated mind, an agitated <coughs> modern mind, which is always hell-bent on fastness, cannot appreciate it. In both the ends, it will be failing to appreciate. Now, coming back to other, other aspect, dharmi, avritti. In the vritti, the philosophy of it is given, I told, vabharati, verbal communication, kaishiki, tender and graceful communication, arbhati, forceful and impactful communication, and then we have uh, satvati, emotional communication. All are important. In a shastra, when we start analyzing, we have to forcefully bifurcate the things. But in art, they are all amalgamated and in an integrated way we enjoy. To give an example, if uh, a soup is prepared, don't to taste it, whether it tastes sweeter or harsher or whether the content of salt is more or not, if you want to taste, all are present. But for that moment, we trigger the sense of salt in our tongue and then we know, yes, salt is more. No, uh, it is hot, it's more. All such things come, even though the thing which is going to be experienced and analyzed is complete. Complete means all the ingredients are present. For the purpose of analysis, we have to make an effort. With all effort, we have to analyze it. And that's why Abhinavutta says, Yadyapi shabdartha shabdartha yoho paramartha taha vedaha tathapi kashchana kalpani kaha vibhagha ashrayini yaha yeva. For the purpose of analysis, we have to bifurcate. Then, we have pravritti. Vritti is philosophy and pravritti is application. Regional preferences are called as pravritti. Again, four divisions he makes, Bharata. We can make any, more, any, any number according to the regional preferences. Dakshinatya pravritti, and then Panchali pravritti. Dakshinatya is South Indian, Panchali is North Indian, and then Vodhamagadi is Eastern, and then we have Avanti pravritti, Western. These are the four pravrittis Bharata mentions. To give an example to understand, in South, we have Mohini Atam. In South Indian Kerala, we have one dance form called Mohini Atam. When Vishnu took the incarnation of Mohini, how he danced, that element is present here. Though they use the same Karnataka music, with a different flavor they use, much like Swapanam music. Lot of oscillations will be there. And even the movements are like that. A lot of uh, waist movements will be there and movement of the shoulder will be there. Very few jumps will be present. Though they have many elements similar to that of uh, Sadhya Bharatatyam, they have distinctly different things. So also the Kuchipudi in the Andhra Pradesh. The same adagos in different way are presented. In there also the regional preferences are very important. I feel in Kerala because of uh, uh, the long coast and even the elephants, the movement of the waves and movements of the elephants, they can be very easily seen in the movement of uh, Mohini Atta. 
In Andhra Pradesh, the nature of jubilance is readily present. When you see Kuchipudi and Sadir Bharatanatyam, you can clearly understand the same madhavos, how they go in Kuchipudi with offbeat movements that is, uh, uh, that is called uh, Akita and Anagata in music. Very beautiful jets are present. It is again depending upon the preferences of the people there. The same language will be spoken in different manner. That's how the pravartis came into existence. Each and every region, each and every person will have certain preferences. If the personal preferences become popular, a set of people start following that it will become a style. It will become a school, like Banis. In Hindustani we have Banis, so also in Karnataka music. These are the features which are present in Pravruti. And then Gana, Swara, Atodhya. These are all connected music. Gana is music with lyric. Bharata gives a lot of songs. Dhruva Gitas. They are all in Prakrit. Dhruva means permanent. In Bharata's theatre, apart from the Sanskrit verses, a lot of Prakrit dialogues and songs were presented because it was a multilingual presentation. I shouldn't even say that Sanskrit practice are two different languages. There are two different dialects, I should say. One Sanskrit being realized by different people of different provinces and they spoke in different manner and that became Prakrit. Prakriti Sanskritam Tatra Bhavam Prakritam. In that way, Prakriti is very musical because there is no visarga or such sounds, harsh sounds. And hence, we can sing very easily. And the melody of Prakrita inspired many people to write songs in that, with the beats that can be set to Thala. They are permanent fixtures. Why Indian film, even today, it relates much on songs? We have the root of that in, we have the basis of that in Bharata. Bharata says these are very, very important. They are permanent fixtures, Dhruvas. Entry of a character, exit of a character, even while it is performed in many acts, will be having five side, uh, types of dhruvas praveshiki, naishkrabiki, antara, akshiptiki, prasadiki. In high emotions, akshiptiki. In low emotions, prasadiki. Like that, we have many songs. Bharata gives models of uh, some 200 songs or so, it is not just. And how the music has to be set? Swara. And then how the instrumentation should go on? Atodhya. And then he says about stage, stagecraft, and how the stages, the stage, different types of stages have to be dealt with. These are all the 11 features that become Nati Sankraha Karika. So, in this one verse, all that has been shown in a pointed manner, that has been narrated in 6000 and odd verses of Nati Shastra, and I'm not going to those details, but what I mean is, Many such details have been given by Bharata. We should make our mind to look into it. For example, by Natisha style, knowing how in those days competitions were conducted and how stage presentations went on and how the judges used to judge them and how they used to declare the people who were the winners and who were the runners, all these details he gives. And also, uh, he gives many features of uh, Composing plays, how the play has to be composed and how the plot has to be developed. Action, reaction, confrontation, confusion and execution. These are five stages. Interestingly, all these five stages are present in any successful and any telling film or novel or any such thing. It's not just a unique feature of Sanskrit play or so. It is a unique feature of any successful writing. Shakespeare's plays very clearly fall. All in the sense, Shakespeare never studied Natasha But any successful writing, any, uh, any profound work of art will have these contents. Saushtava, uh, the proportions, they are the features of any good art. For that one need not study Shilpa Shastra. But by common sense, one can realize, but it is rather difficult, that's why we follow Shastra. Such features are given in Nati Shastra, replete details are present. And then uh, he also gives uh, several interesting features. 
how different people belong to different provinces used to speak, how their makeup and how their costume used to differ, and how one has to imitate that, how one has to observe all these things. And even while naming, he gives a lot of uh, attention to that. Sanskrit is a beautiful language in so many respects. And for the functionality, it's marvelous. There are several types of uh, jewelry, Bharata mentions. Some of them are aropya, the rings. They can be aropya, they can be inserted. And then avishtya, they are tied around using uh, even the dhotis, such sarees and such things, they are avishtya. And then some are uh, abadja, tie, necklace or bajubandi, bracelets, certain things are abadja. And some are avedja, they have to be pierced and then that particular jewel has to be worn. Rings, nose rings, earrings. In ancient India, nose ring was not present, so earrings. And then uh, prakshetya, perfumes can be sprayed and even golden dust that can be sprayed. The very name itself is so beautiful, all are ending with the Labanta. Labanta of years are so attractive. Bharata gives such a systematic codification. In that way, profound content is there and also beautiful expression is present in Nati Shastra and gives telling imagery also. In a successful production, in a beautiful work of art, objective correlative is very important. That has been of late uh, developed by T.S. Eliot, but we see exact <coughs> convergence in Nati Shastra. Vibhava Anubhava Vibhichari Bhavat Sanyoga Vibhava Anubhara Vibhichari Sanyoga Drasrishpati The Vaved uh, Lasa Sutra There the Vibhava is cause and Anubhava is the effect. Cause and effect with other additional emotional details would bring in Rasa. Simple rough translation. But here Bharata Karya Karana Sanyoga Drasrishpati He has not clearly mentioned it is Karya Karana that is cause and effect. He never mentions causation in the direct sense. He uses the word vibhava, cause, anubhava, effect. Vibhava means to a hero, hero in his vibhava, on which his love develops, on her his love develops and vice versa. When hero or heroine see their lovers, what reactions they have, physical reactions and emotional reactions, they become anubhavas. Looking at the beloved, immediately, oh, you have come here like that, face becomes bright and we lift our hand, we move forward, all that is anubhava. And within our this, we have joy, we have harshness, all that emotional detail, fleeting moments of emotion, they are uh, vibhichari bhavas. And the basic bhava, sthai bhava, the latent emotion present, and that is love, prati that will be sublimated and that is called Shrigar Rasa. This way he is mentioning the cause and the effect system and not directly as Karya and Karana. Why? Art is not just replica of the world. In world, cause and effect is materialistic in nature. In art, it is aesthetic in nature. And that's why Vibhava and Anubhava are the words used and not Karya Karana. This insight Abhinamukta can only provide us, provide with us. In that sense, a great commentary like Abhinav Bharati becomes indispensable to understand Nati Shastra. With the time available, I have already crossed my limit. Half an hour is being devoted for discussions. That's why here I start. Uh, it's like uh, a boy going to a sweetmeat stall and looking everywhere for candies and chocolates and chocolate bars and so many things and unable to release everything just touches and then goes away with a frustrated mind. So is my situation now. <laughs> this I start. I invite for your questions from your side. Of course, our tradition is so generous and objective, open-minded. When great sage Pippalada was approached by six seers regarding philosophical inquiry, he said, well, you stay with me for a year or so. Even after that, if you have the same questions, let me answer. Let me try to answer. If 
My answers are not convincing. I will join your crew as a seventh person and we shall go to some other great seer and find out answer there. So that great tradition is in support of me. Any question which I am unable to answer, let us all join together and go for it. Likes and dislikes. 
our emotions are always always driven by our likes and dislikes our likes and dislikes are termed as raga and dvesha in sanskrit attraction and repulsion so our emotions are always colored with this selfish end but in art this selfish end will be withered away so non selfishness in observing emotions that makes the basal emotions a ethereal emotion and that is rasa to give an example i am always fond of giving one example of a painting colors we know that seven colors make white if you take colors from any uh, color company mix them on a palette will not be getting white color because they are all opaque colors if you take seven glasses which have the seven colors and pass the light it will be white in color because they are transparent so the same red if it becomes transparent opaque red is bhava and transparent red is shringar opaque red is rati bhava and transparent red is shringar rasa opaqueness is because of selfishness it is said avidya kama and karma basic ignorance the causal ignorance desire and activity this is the chain ignorance is insufficiency insufficiency in us only triggers desire in us for example i have insufficiency of food means hunger is the immediate thing which comes into my body which will be triggered that is hunger means i need food the desire for food karma ahara karma that is the karma and then karma at the cook food or bake for food that is our karma in the process of rasa though the causal ignorance will not be wiped out it is only the purpose of philosophy to wipe off that philosophy is vidyanam vidya it is the raja vidya it is the best among the vidyas but art at least shows us the way towards that in that sense the enjoyment of art is called rasa and brahmaswada sahodar ringar brother of brahmananda the real ananda is brahmananda the bliss of the self ananda so in that sense avidya and uh, avidya cannot be eradicated by art but kama and karma for that moment they can be eradicated and because of that it is best among the enjoyments of the world though the enjoyment of art is worldly one worldly in nature vishayananda it's always better than that if we turn the tap water falls if you go to niagara water falls but what an amount of difference nobody will watch with wonder for what that falls from the tap but we all go there pay money and look at the made of mist and all we come back why it is the sublime nature it is the discharge that down pour so that grandeur is there and that is in art the ananda the enjoyment that we get from art is sublimated one though we are getting from an external agency we are relishing our own emotions and that's why art cannot be judgmental in nature our likes and dislikes will be different i i want to share one uh, uh, one thing which happened in india before 30 years or so long ago when the tv advent was afresh in india ramayan was produced as a tv serial then people were crazy about that everyone was watching ramayan it wrapped their attention then at the end a poll survey poll was conducted who was the best actor people voted for ravana arvind trivedi and not arun govil rama they were not liking ravana but they liked the acting of arvind trivedi as ravana this distinction has to be seen in art uh, the evil will be appreciated as a character and not as a person for example uh, iago of shakespeare is a wonderful character but a worst person I don't want to befriend Iago in my life, but I want to appreciate Iago's character on stage. This is how, in art, judgment will be suspended 
and the emotions will be appreciated and the appreciation of emotion can happen at the level of rasa and judging an emotion can happen at the level of bhava that's why we have good and bad in terms of black and white in the real life but in art we'll be having lot of gray shades and such appreciation has to make our sensitivity finer and finer to look at the real life situations also and that's why we have two definitions of rasa rasanam rasa and rasyante iti rasa rasas are tasted is at one subjective level where it is itself is rasa at the highest level of idealization and the first one is with the navarasas and the other one with the parvarasa or adhirasa so we have many such connotations i'm very happy that uh, you asked a very seminal question um, but uh, the time is not permitting to me permitting me to elaborate more on that can you please questions? ask the question you were uh, you, you were about to ask some question please i i i want to ask you can you can you just comment on uh, sangeet ratnakara in context of nati shastra ha huh. sangeet ratnakara of shardadeva is a medieval work perhaps around 13th century it was uh, written by shardadeva of devagiri there the seventh chapter we have nrutya and natya all the karanas are explained along with deshi karanas there he keenly follows abhinav gupta uh, to quote padma subramanyam dr padma subramanyam has done wonderful research in this area what abhinav gupta has written in prose shardana deva has written in verse so sangeet ratnakara was lot to abhinav gupta there his rasa theory is no way different from that of abhivyakti vada what was propounded by abhinav gupta but uh, it deals only with angika abhinaya not with uh, vachika abhinaya and not with aharya abhinaya natya shastra is encyclopedia in nature but sangeet ratnakara it deals with uh, uh music elaborately and then instrumental music vadya adhyaya prabandha adhyaya swaragata adhyaya geeta adhyaya like we have seven adhyayas of them six are directly connected with music and only one adhyaya is connected with dance any other question any other next question please any other question here please um could you comment sir on the breadth of the tradition of dance and drama in india um of natya shastra um in view of the fact that the common features of for instance um indra dvaja the raising of the banner of indra at the commencement of the drama festival which is quite prominent in the early chapters of dachi shastra but also in tamar in shilapati kadam uh, there is a uh, madhavi called, doing the dance in the dhyotsava uh, kanu vari uh, where she tunes the harp the yard but this indra vira is mentioned there yes. uh, complete with the uh, indra call the uh, bamboo dance yes. of india so could you comment on oh, oh wonderful a very technical question i enjoy this <laughs> i told the story when the demons attacked the actress who are presenting amrita mathana are chanting of the ocean that play indra came for rescue he started beating the people by pulling a pillar there a stambha dhwaja a flat post and started beating the enemies the demons and then he restored peace on the stage and the production was continued then he presented that as a trophy to bharata and said may this protect you and your production later and then it became a tradition to enter with indra dhwaja or that was called jarjara jaraginti daityaniti jarjara that will destroy that will um, subordinate the demons and that will uh, suppress them 
and that will vanquish them with that meaning jarjara came into existence it has four five strands one for brahma other for vishnu and the other for shiva and then for skanda and then for sarpa like that it is something like a, a towering feature and uh, there different colored flags have to be decked in like that it goes on and in the beginning of uh, any stage production the formal uh, presentation is called purvaranga purvaranga is something like to warm up to warm up the kanashiyas for the main production purvaranga was used bharata says if the kanashiyas are real rasikas you need not elaborate on that it is something like the advertisement which come before the film like that these purvaranga elements which go on 17 to 19 elements are present and there jarjara sthapana is one uh, sutradhara with his two assistants they come to the stage they dance and then in the south uh, north eastern direction ishanya direction they uh, establish they erect that jarjara and then the fourth one comes chaturthakara and he comes and worships tom mahendra praharana sarvadana sudana Uh, like that the shloka also bharata gives and later he says it should be sung in specific tala with specific uh, syllables like that he gives another detail also this particular thing was mentioned in is mentioned in shilapadikaram of kovalan uh, sorry of yelangodigal there madavi on dances in kaveri pattanam kumpuga will be dancing during the festival of indra dwajotsava this period is indra dwajotsava period navaratra festival period is indra dwajotsava period after the rains because agro based society agricultural society essentially depends on rains especially india which is dependent on monsoons it has to depend on rains and good rains good showers means good harvest directly proportional to richness of water abundance of water that's why they wanted to show gratitude to indra and that indra aradhana became indra dwajotsava lot of references of indra dwajotsava are present in ramayana and mahabharata and other things when dashartha uh, <clears throat> got fainted and he fell on ground valmiki says he fell like uh, indra dwaja which was fallen on the ground after the indra dwaja festival indra maha festival it's also called indra maha uh, scholars like uh, veer raghavan and even vasudev sharan agarwal have written lot about these things even today in bali and other islands of uh, indonesia we see the reference of indra dwaja and there we do see the bamboo stick in this uh, season being erected there and that tradition is seen even today in indian traditional theater uh, in kuchipudi uh, dance madavi vidushaka and even the sutradhara of the play he comes madhavi do is a female character will be enacted in male costume by man he comes with the stick in his hand and that represents indra dwaja and in tirupattu uh, of tamil nadu uh, jester comes with a stick in his hand and he is called kattai karan kattai in tamil means a stick so that even in yakshagana we have something like that everywhere we do see such references accordingly it is the relic of indra dwaja that is present thank you there's a question at the back last question please please namaste sir thank you so much for the wonderful talk um, i was wondering about the possibility of natya shastra having inspired or influenced in any way classical ballet because we usually talk about rukmini devi arundel being uh, inspired by anna pavlova But if you go back a little in history, ballet started in Italy and France in 15th, 16th century, and at the same time, the French were also having their settlements in India. And uh, there's a lot of similarity between uh, ballet techniques and the Karanas, especially. So I was wondering if there's been any studies done on this. Or... I don't know whether Shrimati Rukmini Arundel got inspired by Natya Shastra or not. But this much I can say, in in Indian theatre itself. we have lot of group productions in natya shastra itself in the movements pindi bandha pindi bandha means clustering and group dance kamala pindi mayura pindi trishula pindi shivalinga pindi like that many such pindis are given pinda means making a ball 
coming together, clustering. Pindi Bandha is something like that. In the Pururanga, Lata, Shrinkarika, like that, in the form of a creeper, in the form of chain, dancers should join, separate accordingly, an aesthetic effect of movement has been produced, like that Bharata gives. Asarita, and then Marga Sarita, like that, in those things, Bharata mentions uh, how a group dance should go on. And we have the very clear evidences of many plays also. And even in the regional theatre, for example, Ekshigana, the beautiful regional traditional theatrical form of Karnataka, especially coastal Karnataka, there we see dance drama productions. Uh, to me, the most close uh, example of Natyashastrik presentation is in Yakshagana, especially the Badavdip Yakshagana, the northern school of Yakshagana. Even the Aharya, the costumes, they are in tune with Bharatas. And there we have the spontaneous Vachika. And then the songs, Dhruva songs, the Bhagavata, the singer will be singing. And accordingly, the dance will go on. And then the dialogues will be delivered by the actors. Bharata's actors were not at all singing. Orchestra was provided, and that was called Kutupa in Nati Shastra. In Yakshagana also, uh, the hymn made up. The bathroom singers will be there, singer, and then the instrumentalist will be there. And the dance will go on when the song is presented. When the song stops, then the dialogue will go on. So all the three abhinayas are there and every actor should be gifted with the emotional presentation that is Sattvika. These are all present. I don't know whether Rukmini Arundel had an understanding of this, but I can infer somehow that she got inspired from Kathakali. Kathakali is cousin of Yakshagana. Kathakali is also a traditional theatrical presentation very close to Natshastra in spirit. And many movements of uh, Kalakshetram dance has uh, its uh, roots in uh, Kathakali. Even many uh, products of uh, Kalakshetram, they were influ influenced by that. Typical example is uh, the great Dhananjayan. His movements, a lot of Kathakali elements are seen. That's so, she would have been influenced by such uh, regional traditional theatres. We can't rule out that. But whether she really went through Nati Shastra or not, uh, I don't have any idea. Thank you. Thank you. dances are in how the artistry is attended to as well as the technical aspects of dance um, yeah in terms of the dancers training how 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 is artistry or the emotion or the other aspects of the performer um, trained is there a place for that in the training Training, how it used to go on? The, the, yeah, the performers who are delivering the art, is, 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 is there a sort of a nourishment or a training of their own artistry in, in the process of the technicality, as well as developing the technicalities needed to, 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 to dance? Uh, you want to know about uh, the training aspect that is given in Nati Shastra? Yes. A uh, lot of uh, elements are present. Uh, he gives a lot of uh, qualifications that are needed for an artist. To become an artist, what are the qualifications needed? Nata Lakshana, Nati Lakshana, Nartaka Lakshana, like that all the details are given. And then the way in which the text is written, that itself is a training. If you look into the Tantra Lakshana Chaya, how each Karana has to be performed, he then uses Saustava is very important. And every movement has to be embellished with Rechaka. Uh, I told that uh, that Rechika is a beautiful aspect, intangible aspect of dance. I mentioned about Gamaka. Dr. Padma Subramaniam very beautifully draws parallel between Gamaka of music and Rechika of Natya. To make it personal, to make a raga, to make a swaradrama personal, so that originality will be restored, the musician will have his or her signature of the using of Gamaka. And every raga is so. Because of the variations of Gamakas, the ragas themselves will get changed. To give an example, 
the darbari kannada of hindustani music if it is sung with a different tempo with a different emotion it becomes adhana adhana is a very brilliant and uh, very heroic raga while darbari is very heavy and uh, very deep raga likewise we have a manj a raga of carnatic music a subset of bhairavi like that we have it's all because of the gamakas the same notes in madhyamavati will become made in hindustani music but madhyamavati's flavor itself is entirely different when compared with mega of hindustani music in that way rechakas they give personal touch they give uniqueness to uh, uh, karana and they have to be adopted according to the acharyas teaching and the inspiration that a student gets from one's own from within these things will certainly point out towards the training aspect and in kaapu adhyaya kaapu means intonation in what way we want, we want to say how the same word with different intonations will bring in different meanings this is again another aspect of training and that so many features are present and then we have a lot of references to dance learning theatrical practices in later works for example a less known work of uh, beautiful creativity damodar gupta a 9th century poet of kashmir in his uh, kutini mata uh, the opinion of a harlot he gives a very detailed description of play ratnavali how it was staged in varanasi dr s jan s s jan ki a devout student of veer raghavan has written a lot about this particular occasion in kuttani mata how a production used to go on like that why even in a play like bal ramayana of rajshekara how the detailed way of abhinay has to go on by giving stage directions even a commentator like raghav bhatta or kalidasa shakuntala and even bhavuti sutaram charita she gives lot of presentation techniques they are all because of the training that they got and they have the live example of so many artists they have been trained from teachers from masters from time immemorial we will be knowing it but uh, elaborate recording of that is not made because when a tradition is living we don't even find the need to give an example cookery books are present but in no cookery book uh, you first lick the stove and then place the pan on it you place the pan on the stove that's what they say the stove has to be on the stove has to be lit nobody will say because it is a living tradition nobody will will go to such details hence it is not given but there are instances one book on geeta govinda from tanjavu saraswati mahal library it speaks about the abhinaya of geeta govinda how every verse every line of geeta govinda has to be enacted that is a training we have something like kavi shiksha training for poets kshemendra a devout student of abhinav gupta in skalkanta varana gives lot amarchand suri in kavi kalpata he gives like that there are many people have given training for poets many treatises of for training for poets are given such treatises exclusively are not given for actors but they are mentioned here and there by that will be knowing that there was a method there was a tradition friends friends you will have to conclude i would request our uh, vice chairman padma shri dr jan mar to kindly propose word of thanks for our wonderful wonderful speaker Sure. One, one, one. At the end, all are invited for snacks in our party hall. Thank you. Dr. Vanishki, Director, Friends. What a voyage. I think I would like as a simile. What a voyage through the ocean that 
is the culture and art of India as expressed, as our speakers told us so ably, in Natya Shastra. I often feel that the culture of India and the tradition of India is like a cut jewel, that it is one object, it is one piece of stone, to put it rather crudely, one piece of stone, but you look into the facets of the cuts that have been made, and you see different colors, different perceptions, but in the end, it all boils down to one entity and one tradition. And if anyone in my limited experience has demonstrated the validity of how our culture is not only propagated but felt on the part of the audience, never mind the performers, this duality of experience. Our lecturer has given us that insight. Clearly, <laughs> from a wide range of perception, not only in the classicism of the text themselves, and that, to me, vital link with sculpture and iconography. After all, where do we have the 108 colors expressed? I remember very well when Wendy and I were a in the, oh dear, say, in the 50s, in the temple at Chidambaram, uh, in the East Cobra and the West, both those sculptures. Fortunately, with the text, thank goodness, yes, there's the another text. set of Tiruvan Namale that hasn't got the text. But all the sort of unification that is summated in the Nazi Shastra. And so we could not have had a better navigator than your soul. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, friends, thank you so much. On uh, Monday, Shatavdhani Dr. Ganesh Ji will be speaking on Valmiki, Vyasa, and Kalidasa. And on Tuesday, the art of Shatavdhana. So you're all most welcome to come for those two. And please do tell your friends. Tomorrow, we have a special seminar on the life and the works of Dr. S.L. Bhairappa, one of the leading personalities in Nagas, scholars from our state of America, is here. That's at the Nehru Center. The event is at the Nehru Center at 2.45. Those of you who can come, please do try. And on Sunday, we have...